Hello, welcome to our lecture Intonation in English Part 2. Here's a quick review of what we have learned so far. Intonation, like word stress and rhythm, is a supersegmental. It has to do with the music and rhythm of the language. Intonation may vary depending on speech speed. A faster speaker may have a different intonation pattern as compared to someone who speaks more slowly. Intonation is closely related to emotional overtones. Intonation is used to convey emotions. Final rising and final falling intonation patterns are very common. For example, he's sick. He's sick? Final falling intonation is used in statements, commands, and WH questions. Final rising intonation, on the other hand, is used with yes or no questions and statement questions. Final intonation and prominence, depending on the word you emphasize, the meaning of the context is going to change. What did then bring? Focus is on the result. Somebody brought something. But then if I say, what did then bring? The focus is now on the agent. I want to know what that specific person brought. Again, let's look at a representation of intonation. We discussed 1, lowest pitch, 2, neutral pitch, 3, the prominence, the word that's getting the biggest emphasis, and then intensify prominence. Number 4 is generally used in emotional situations because our voice goes louder. So here we have an example of a statement. I can see it. I can see it. So in statements, our intonation goes down at the end, falling intonation. In yes or no questions, as we have discussed, your voice goes up. Can you see it? Can you see it? So there is a rise in the intonation at the end. Rising intonation is also used in repetition questions. This is used when a speaker has not heard or understood what someone said. So these questions are used as a way to ask the person to repeat the information. For example, what? Huh? What did you say? What was that? What are you doing? You're doing what? So your voice goes up at the end. And the Based on the intonation, the way you ask the question, based on the intonation pattern that you use, the person understands that they need to repeat what they just said. Rising intonation and shifting prominence. Depending on the emphasis you give, the meaning of the sentence is going to change. For example, John cooked dinner. John cooked dinner. Okay, so the focus is on dinner. Now, let's shift the prominence and focus on John. John cooked dinner? John cooked dinner? But now we want to emphasize the action of cooking. So we're going to now emphasize the word cooked. John cooked dinner? Like he didn't buy it? He cooked it? That's surprising. Okay, so it's very important that we know which word to emphasize and which intonation pattern to use to convey the message we want to convey. Let's take a look at a, a dialogue emphasizing prominence. Where are you going? Home. Where are you going? To Miami. What did you say? Miami. I'm meeting my family there. Seriously? Really? So here we have prominence and then we have intonation patterns. As you can see, the voice is going down on WH questions and statements. And the voice is going up on questions, please repeat the message, and surprise. Seriously? So it's very important that we pay attention to prominence and also which intonation pattern to use. Other uses of intonation include some types of grammar structures, like tag questions, vocatives, and emotional overtones. Now, in reality, these areas are far less clear than they seem. So it's not very clear what the role of intonation is. Let's take a look at the examples. Tag questions and intonation. Now, if your voice goes down at the end of the tag question, it means that you want the person to agree with you. John really sick, isn't he? 
he should take some medicine, shouldn't he? Like, I, th I think he should take medication. What do you think? Do you agree with me? So, if your voice goes down, falling intonation at the end of a tag question, you are hoping that the listener will agree with you. Now, if you have a rising intonation in a tag question, it means that you are uncertain about something and you want someone to clarify it for you. John's feeling better, isn't he? I'm not sure. Uh, is he feeling better? John's feeling better, isn't he? See the difference? John's feeling better, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. I'm not sure. Please tell me. Versus John's feeling better, isn't he? I think he's feeling better and I want you to agree with me. Now we have the calling contour. For example, you are in the kitchen and you are calling your daughter to come have dinner. So you're going to yell and you're going to say, Elizabeth, time for dinner. Okay, so this is the contour for calling someone. Vocatives, when you're talking about names. Michelle Paulson. Michelle Balson? No, Paulson with a P. I'm sorry, Miss Paulson. Yes, here it is. That's for one night. So you have a different intonation pattern depending on what you're emphasizing. Emotions, attitudes, and intonation. Intonation does not have a specialized role in telling us about emotions and attitudes. We cannot say that intonation alone does the job for us. Instead, intonation is one clue among many related to emotional content in speech, like grammar, construction, vocabulary, choice, and also, of course, body language. But intonation is one of the components that express emotions and attitudes. Emotional overtones. Welcome to class. My name is Timothy. I'll be your instructor. Versus, welcome to class. My name is Timothy. I'll be your instructor. So the first one is more excited. It's delicious. Welcome to class. My name is Timothy. I'll be your instructor. So here we have a little bit more excitement. So more emotional overtones. Uninverted yes or no question. Marianne's going skydiving? What? You're kidding me. She's crazy. I can't believe she's going to do it. Yes or no question. Is Marianne really going skydiving? True? Is it true? Uninverted WH question. Marianne's doing what? Please repeat the information. What did you just say? And then WH question. What is Marianne doing? Like, what did you just say? Skydiving? No. So here, all four examples express surprise. Now, you have different grammar structures. You have different structures in terms of grammar, but they all mean surprise. They all convey surprise. Then we have international idioms, right? Not even a word, but these idioms also convey something. For example, let's take a look at the mm sound. The first one is mm. As in, what did you say? Mm? The second one is, means yes. Mm. And the third one means I'm thinking. Mm. And then the last one means this is good, delicious. Mm. So even in idioms like this, you have different intonation patterns and they convey different things. So repetition or more information. Depending on what you want the person to say to you, you need to use the correct intonation pattern. So let's say I'm going to New York. Where? New York. Do you have Mary's phone number? Who's Mary's? Ted likes the blue one best. Which one? The blue one. I can't find the car keys. Which keys? The car keys. I'm taking my vacation in November. When? In November. So when your voice goes up here, you're asking for clarification. You're asking for repeated information. Now, if you, if you want more information instead of repetition, your voice is going to go down. For example, I'm going to New York. Where? New York City. I'm going to New York. Where? New York City. So your voice goes down and then you're asking for more information.
Now, if a voice goes up, you're asking for somebody to repeat the question or the information. Okay, so if you want to learn more about intonation, and intonation is a little bit more complex because it has to do also with emotion. So there's this connection that's a little bit more complicated. So if you want to learn more, please read the extra provided material for you to gain a better and deeper understanding of the roles of both prominence and intonation in English. Now, the material is going to emphasize intonation and prominence and how the discourse changes depending on the intonation patterns and the prominence you use. Enjoy the reading. Thank you for watching this lecture.